Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Avail Podcast. <clears throat> we dig deep. We talk about the art of leadership. We get we get our hand. We roll up our sleeves, get our hands dirty. Talk about the exciting world of leadership with amazing leaders. And uh, we have a leader who's back, everybody. We have Pastor Chris Songson. He's back. We had him on an episode on Avail. Uh, a few months ago, and it's exciting because we're going to talk about a new book. I'm happy to be here, everybody. Virgil Sierra, lead pastor of Vertical Church, your host on Avail Podcast. Pastor Chris Songson, it's good to have you back on the Avail Podcast. How are you feeling? Oh, man, I'm feeling great. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast today. Excited to uh, to hang out with you. Uh, and uh, I have no idea what... I haven't figured out your hairstyle. All I know is you can pull it off, and I can't. I don't know what... It, this. Hey. <laughs> We we all have we all have different giftings. You can pull. I <laughs> it's have, fading in some places. That's because you have style. I have no style. You have style. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, my wife would be laughing right now. But thank you for. I, I'll take it. I'll take the compliment, uh, Pastor Chris. Can I just say something? I, I love leaders like you because here's what I here's what I see, and this is my take. This is my perspective, right? I see in you uh, a seasoned, experience kind of like top notch lead leader. But I see in you a leader who is hungry and desperate to help the next generation of leaders that's coming up and current leaders that are in the trenches. Would you, would that, does that resonate with you? Yeah, it does. I appreciate you saying that. That's very kind of you. I, uh, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, I, I tell leaders all the time, man, if you want to, uh, the, the key to everything isn't just adding leaders to the kingdom, it's multiplying leaders multiplying their life, multiplying their impact, multiplying their influence, their ability. And for me, if I multiply a thousand leaders, it's more than I could ever do hmm. by myself. And so I love, I love adding values to leaders that are 20 years old. And I love giving hope to a leader that's 60 years old and still wants to be effective for the kingdom. And it doesn't matter to me. Either yeah. way. Just, uh, I just want to add value to, to leaders. Absolutely. I love that. I, I admire that about you. Before we jump into the book, which I got next to me here, if anybody who's watching the video, Traction, Five Proven Principles for Unstoppable Growth. I would love maybe just maybe just to do a quick uh, a quick uh, about you for the people who are leaning in maybe for the first time uh, regarding pastor, regarding some of the initiatives that you lead, like Church Boom. Yep. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I live in Southern California uh, and uh, married two kids, two granddaughters. Uh, we are the founders of South Hills Church. Uh, we have 12 sites as the founder. I don't really do a lot of the day-to-day -day anymore, but I still am very involved uh, in other ways. And then uh, we also have Church Boom. Church Boom does two things. It's coach pastors and rescues uh, churches. And so we coach pastors, executive coach pastors. We offer executive coaching. We offer something called Church Boom University. We have a network that pastors can come, be a part of, be a tribe, learn, grow, develop. And then we rescue churches. So churches that are 20, 30, 40, 50 people that might face the threat of closing their doors, we rescue those churches uh, and try to try to get them back healthy again. So that's kind of the overview of where uh, of what we're doing these days. And then, you know, write some books and all that stuff. But primarily uh, in the church <laughs> world, we coach pastors and rescue churches. I love that. I love that. And that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, initiative. We've, we've talked about that in the last episode. Um, I'm excited about this book. I'm excited about this new book. Yeah. Um, it's your most recent book. Yeah. Traction, Five Proven Principles for Unstoppable Growth. Come on, share with us. Why did you write this book? Where, how was it birthed? Why is it here? Well, actually, it, 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 it uniquely has a twofold purpose. One, um, it's a book, by, as it stands alone, as a book of a resource for pastors and leaders. It is has an extremely unique angle on it from that angle in that we take all the coaching lessons that we do in uh, the church boom world. So coaching lessons on how to be mission critical, how to run a staff meeting, how to create volunteer recruitment, how to create leadership pipelines, how to create generosity in your church, all the different methods and different form formulas that we use, probably 35, 40 of them. We took all of them. And we built it inside wow. of the church. And what we wow. did was, is we took the five components of a train. And then we took those five components and put them inside of a church and said, okay, now 
there's going to be one of five areas that are going to be an issue in your church if you're not feeling the momentum you want. And then we actually, in there, in that, under that component, we talk about all our different exercises. So it's a book to pastors, but what else is really cool is it also serves as the foundation to a coaching certification program uh, that we just launched. So if people go to church.org, wow. you can, uh, at churchboom.org, you can learn, how do I become a coach? How do I get certified? So that book, along with a lot of videos and a bunch of other stuff we added to it, becomes a coaching certification. So it's a book by itself, but it also is the book that's foundational to a coaching certification for pastors that feel like, man, I want to coach other pastors. Ooh, I like that. I didn't, even, I didn't, I didn't even know that. I mean, I've been able to kind of read through a lot of, a lot of the sections and I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, and anybody, anybody who's leaning in right now, if you're in any kind of leadership uh, in church, uh, if you have a heart for church leadership, if you have a pastor friend or a few pastor friends, if you are a pastor, you need to grab this book. You need to share it. You you might, you maybe you might want to buy a few, do a small group <laughs> and get or gift it to some people. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I love the, the concept of, you know, kind of those five areas, you know, of church and ministry, um, yeah. as far as, as far as growth, growth, right. Obviously you wrote it for this. Uh, where would you say is kind of, kind of square one when, when, when somebody tells you, Pastor Chris, we're stuck. Um, I know there's mm -hmm. probably many places you could go, but where's one yeah. place where you say, okay, let's start here. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the big areas, again, there's five components to a train. One of those components is the engine. So a train has five components. One of those components is the engine. Of course, it has fuels and tracks and cars and conductor, but it has the engine. We relate that to growth strategies. So an in, a train doesn't operate without an engine. It's not going to go anywhere. And a church doesn't right. operate without growth strategies. And so <clears throat> often, can't say every time, but often uh, when we're working with a church, um, we look at the growth strategy and say, how do you actually grow your church? And I think a lot of people put on, Hey, we try to put on great services. We do outreaches. We pass out flyers, do all that stuff. No one's talking about like, okay, but how do you create an invite culture in your church? How do you get people? How does that become the culture of church? And once those people get invited to the church, what's the speed of engagement by which they get locked into the church? Because when mm. they get locked into the church, they're 500 times more likely to stay in your church when they get locked in and locked in or engaged is, you know, I join your church, your church. I come for two or three months. I sign up. I, I'm going to help out being a greeter. Now I'm engaged. So yep. we increase the amount of guest flow and then engage those people quicker. When we can do that, we can start to see momentum happen in the church. And that to me is one of the biggest missing links when we work with churches. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think, I think it's so easy. And, and, and do you ever get this? Okay. And, and again, I'm a pastor too. And I think that, that everything's important, but do you ever get like, like a position from pastor to church leaders kind of like, well, the most important thing is the word of God. You know, the most yeah. important thing <laughs> is, is, you know, the Holy Spirit's present, which, which, Hey, we know that these are key elements, but it's kind of yeah. like undermining some of this stuff. Yeah. Well, I teach in the book and I also, when I, when all of our coaches and, and it's sort of a underlining theme of church boom is that we believe that spirit and strategy can coexist. And that's a statement that we really lock on to. Like, absolutely. Uh, the spirit and the strategy can coexist. And another way of looking at it is there's the God factor and the leadership factor. The God factor says we can't do anything without God, but the leadership factor says that God typically doesn't do anything without a leader. Uh, and so <laughs> you got to have the spirit. Oh yeah, gosh, of course. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt about that, but also there's strategy. You look throughout the old Testament, Hey, march around the wall seven times strategy. Okay. Line up mm -hmm. the people over here. Cause we're going to eat strategy. We're going to go out two by two strategy. You know, there's always a strategy that goes with it. Spirit and strategy have to coexist. And so that to me is a, is kind of a foundational concept uh, for churches uh, and for pastors to understand. Yeah, that's huge. I, I think as you're, as you're sharing, I, I think 
you know, it might sound to some kind of like, well, of course, but the truth is, I think it's good and important to hear this. And it's good to hear this from, from seasoned and experienced pastors like yourself, because it's not saying that one is more important than the other, or that one is unnecessary. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a both and, 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 and so here, so here's another question. And after that, I want to, I'll jump into some of the other, you know, aspects of the train, so to speak. But is it of your opinion that that any church has the potential to grow. I mean, or, you know, can there be somebody that says, Hey, this is it. This is all, I, this is all we're called to do, you know, because this is, this yeah. is what God called us to. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I haven't really ran into that, uh, in the sense of like, <laughs> and here, here's why I say it that way is like, I haven't ran into it. Like someone saying or church saying or pastor saying we've maximized our potential. What I've mm-hmm. learned and what I've seen so far is this. I'll, I'll, let me back up and say it this way. So scripture teaches us the parable of the talents. To one he gives five talents, to one he gives two, to one he gives one. Yep. Uh, God determines the talents. That's not our job. To one he gives five, to one he gives two, to one he gives one. That, that's up to him. Yep. God determines the talent. We determine the choices. Now, yep. the problem isn't are you a two-talent person? The problem is, are you a two-talent person living at a one-talent level? Right. Me, that's where always the problem is. The problem, I, I very rarely ever see a church uh, kind of, um, or a pastor, where I look and go, man, they are getting all the coaching they can. They're getting all the development they can. They're learning everything they can. They got a regular coach in their life. They're developing. They're, they're Like that typically doesn't happen. Typically, I see a two-talent pastor, three talent pastor, four talent pastor, whatever, living at sure. a at a one level less. And that's what creates, in my opinion, creates the biggest problem. So it isn't a matter of, hey, you go in and this is the best it's going to get. Rarely, rarely that happens. Typically you walk in and say, okay, you may not ever be a pastor that leads a thousand people. But I bet if we work at this thing, your church of a hundred could become 250, but you're going to have to really work at it. Uh, that's kind of where I see the challenge. Yeah, I, I hear that. I think, I think you're right. I think it, it's, everybody doesn't have the same growth potential. However, we all have that responsibility to rise up to, to the potential and the talents that God has given us. Uh, I want to, I want to go back to the the analogy of the, of the, these five parts of the train uh, and, and the church. Uh, one of them in your chapter, in chapter number three of traction fuel, and, and, and fuel specifically yeah. focuses on in on leadership and finances, which personally I'm a big fan of these two in within the context of church because I feel like they help drive uh, a lot of the vision. Can you can you unpack some thoughts there? Yeah, absolutely. So again, that's one of the components of the train is the fuel. You, you don't operate a train without fuel. Now move over to the church, like you said, leadership and resources. So two things. One, let's talk about leadership. Leadership being uh, resources, finances is how you said it, but let's talk about leadership. First, there's two parts to the fuel. One is leadership. We talk about in there the idea of that in most cases, we don't really have a clear pattern of like a simple question. How do you develop leaders at your church? Most people, <laughs> yeah. they, that's just a simple question. Well, you know, I mean, we see someone that's faithful and, you know, and then we just kind of give them a badge and call them a leader. I'm like, <laughs> that's not developing a leader. That's just finding someone faithful and then putting a badge on them and calling them a leader. Just because someone's faithful doesn't make right. you a leader. Faithful is great, but it doesn't make you a leader. And so mm-hmm. they'll put a badge on them that says leader. But where's the system? You know, where's the like, okay, first they come into the church and then they become a volunteer and then we start to apprentice them and we mentor them and then that takes six months and then they become a leader. Like, where does where does the that happen. And so we talk about that throughout the chapter uh, of the leadership ladder. And that's a huge part of what we talk about both in the book and in our, our church room coaching certification. Like you got to help churches develop a leadership. That's good. A leadership ladder. Like just answer, everybody listen to this podcast, just, and, and you're a pastor, answer the simple question. How do I become a leader in your church? If it's faithful or whatever, that's a problem because that's not the only issue. Okay. Often a pastor will say on that leadership topic, they'll say, well, you know, I, I as a pastor, I'm the lead pastor speaking. I as a pastor, I kind of see something in someone, spend a little time with them. What they're saying is they're <laughs> intuitive. First, they don't have a system, but let's put that aside. 
Uh, I, I sure. know there's a pastor in Ohio, perfect example. There's a pastor in Ohio, I've got a big church. He's very intuitive. Like he can see someone and say, he just sees potential people. He'll start spending a little time with them and he brings them up. That's awesome. That's wonderful. But what I told him recently was, I said, Pastor, I said, you are naturally intuitive to raising up leaders. And he goes, yeah, I've always been that way. I go, here's the problem with intuitiveness. It is never duplicatable. Intuitiveness isn't duplicatable. It's just a right. So you're intuitive, but the rest of your team isn't. So you're the only one developing leaders at this big old church and nobody else isn't. You have to create a system, a ladder. How do we develop leaders? That's the leadership side. Now we go over to the second side, finances. Re, I call it resources, finances, whatever. So you got leadership uh -huh. and money. Uh -huh. Okay, same thing. Let's talk about money. Here's what I always say about money slash resources. I always say mm -hmm. that the battle is won or lost in the resources. If you think about okay. If you think about, if you look at some of the old letters from the Civil War, uh, one letter being written to another, you know, general, another sergeant, whoever. Right. It was cool. I, I saw this on the History Channel one time. One letter said, we don't have to kill the enemy. All we have to do is cut off their resources. And we win the game. If they don't get water, we win. If they don't get ammunition, we win. We don't have to kill them. Just cut off the resources. I think the enemy, our enemy, I think he knows the same thing, that the battle I won is a loss of the resources. I don't have to destroy that mm -hmm. church. I just need to cut off the resources. I cut off the resources, I win. The enemy is thinking. So the mm -hmm. battle is won or lost in the resources. So if we have a plan for our leadership, we also have to plan have a plan for our resources. And what I tell throughout the book, you'll, you'll hit it in there, it's like, how do you raise your tithing dollars? How do you set a generosity calendar for 12 months and say, okay, when are we going to talk about generosity? When are we going to do something we call the 90 day challenge, challenge people to tithe for 90 days. And it's this whole thing that we do a system. How do we, how do we get people? When, when do we teach on financial stewardship? When are we going to talk about tithing and giving? Do we know the different tiers like this, this person, this kind of group, of a hundred or kind of tithing or above this group is kind of medium. This group's kind of, and how do we raise those people up? So it's this entire system to think about how do we make sure we're generating enough resources to fuel the vision of the church? Because the battle for the vision, the battle for the church, the battle for the growth will always be won or lost in the resources. I love that. I love that analogy. And I think what you're saying is so true. Um, you know, I think I think when when you start to experience uh, some success, and, and I'd love to I'd love for you to speak to this because I know a lot of what you do is coaching, and there might be pastors uh, and leaders leaning in that might say we want some of that coaching. I, I I sense because I've experienced it when you begin to have a little success with some of the coaching you're getting, uh, when you start to see some things click, you start to see some some light bulbs turn on personally and on your team. You start saying, okay, here. There's something, there's something in this book traction that pastor Chris knows something and he's, he's put, he's putting it out there for us. Um, can you talk to, to what you see when a church or pastor begins to get a little bit of momentum, you know, even the, even the analogy of the train, right? Um, yeah. what happens, mm -hmm. what, what happens and, and, and what does it look like to you? Yeah, I, well, I, I think the extreme positive side of momentum is this, um, and, uh, it's as simple as I think that hope and confidence arises. Uh, competence produces confidence. Competence produces confidence. So when you create competence in them, they start to learn things. They start to learn systems. They start to see a little bit of growth. Even if it's, you know, hey, we were 200, now we're 210, 220, 250. There's a confidence yeah. that comes from the confidence. Yeah. Confidence comes from confidence. And now all of a sudden they feel like, man, I could do that. And they start getting hope. They start feeling like they can conquer. And man, when you have hope and you have confidence on your side and you have some strength on your side and some momentum on your side, you know, one thing I talk about there is it's not like some new thought, but when you, when you have a train, I don't know if you ever stood next to a real train. I mean, they are massive, you know, yes. like you look up and you're like, man, you just, uh, you know, when you're in your car, you don't realize how big they are until you stand next to them. You just put a big old brick in front of a train and it can't go anywhere. But once it's going 60 miles an hour, it'll blast through a brick wall because it has momentum. 
Uh, -hmm. I think that's what momentum does for you. Momentum creates hope and it creates confidence and it creates strength. And when we see a pastor that's starting to work with us in all the churches that we work with across the nation, when they start getting momentum, hope rises, confidence rises. Um, and man, it just seems like, man, it just seems like they're a locomotive flying down the track and nothing's going to get in their way. Uh, and it doesn't, doesn't take a lot, but you do need someone to help you gain momentum. I have two coaches in my life. They coach me on a regular basis, uh, because I believe in it. Professionals get coached. Amateurs learn by trial and error. And I want to, I want to make sure that I'm a professional. And so I tell people all the time, man, get the coaching, get the help, get momentum. Cause once you get momentum, hope and confidence will be on your side. I love that. I love that momentum. Hope, confidence, and strength arise, and it gives you that momentum to keep moving. So, something that I love, I love learning about personally, uh, Pastor Chris, is is how to win as far as our staff team, uh, or if maybe if it's a smaller church, kind of your key leaders that maybe will one day become the first staff members. Um, you know, and 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 with the church at large, can you can you bring? Is that part of the train analogy? The the staff, the leaders, the people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we talk about uh, the five components, and uh, one of those components is cars. So the components, just real quick, because we keep saying the five, I don't think we've listed them, is the conductor, which is the leader, <laughs> right? The conductor is the leader. The engine mm-hmm. is the growth strategies. The fuel, we already talked about, is the leadership, and finances, resources. The tra- Then you have the tracks, which is your mission, your vision, your values, your culture. That's the tracks you're running on as a train. And then the fifth one is cars, all the cars behind it. The cars behind it represent your team, your staff, your leaders, all the cars behind it. What's interesting is kind of like the uh, the book I wrote before, Saving Your Church From Itself, which was you know about churches getting off uh, derailed or pastors getting derailed or leaders and how much damage it causes to be toxic. You have a train. You have a bunch of cars. Say there's 100 cars. If car number 18 gets derailed, everything after it is going to be disastrous. It is so Mm -hmm. important that the cars, being your staff, your board, your key leaders, they all have to be aligned. If they are not aligned, it's just a matter of time before that thing derails. And if you've ever seen on the news, you know, after a train crashes, it's unbelievable how much damage it creates. I think the same thing happens in the church. When we, when we see some cars derail, i.e. staff, key leaders, the damage is tremendous. And so that's the fifth component of the train. The final component we talk about is making sure those cars are aligned because that's the cars can ruin. All the momentum you have can be ruined when the cars aren't aligned. Yeah, that's good. I, I'd like to dig a little deeper here regarding regarding the cars of the train, right? The, the, the yep. staff team, key leaders, um, wh- where are some of the common pitfalls or the common areas that you've noticed as you've coached pastors and churches, uh, where, where, where maybe it's, it's a consistent area of struggle or challenge when it comes to the lead lead pastor or the lead team and those key players, right? Where are some of those common uh, areas of weakness or areas that need a lot of attention in regards to the staff and leaders. Yeah. So we're talking about like, okay, here's your staff or here's your key leader, the, the leader. And then there's the cars, you know, and your staff and your, all that stuff. And you're asking, where is the common sort of tension or problem? My opinion yeah. is if I had to narrow it down into one thing, it would be the tension between the first chair in the second chair. What you have in any church situation is you have a pastor in the first chair and then you have a staff in the second chair. Then if you're the children's pastor, you're in the first chair in that department and you have people in the second chair. But let's just let's just focus for a moment on lead pastor and staff. Lead pastor serves in the first chair. You got a youth pastor who's running his own ministry, I mean, you know, inside of the church, children's ministry, whatever. Mm-hmm. Here's where the tension is. The tension between the first chair and second chair happens with the second chair because you are a second chair leader with first chair responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Multi-site, 
uh, hey, you know, you're, you're, say you're, say I'm, I'm running a multi site. We're a multi. We have 12 campuses, and you're one of the campus pastors. You got to run your own campus, run your own thing, build your own thing. So you have an incredible amount of first chair responsibilities, yeah. but you're in the second chair. That's right. where the tension arrives. And then that tension starts to show up like this. You have to manage the tension between that second chair leader has to manage the tension between submission and authority at the same time. Yeah. They have to manage the their strength and the pastor weakness at the same time. Their passion and the pastor's direction at the same time. All of that has to be being managed in the second chair. And if they don't manage it well in their heart, they end up starting to become toxic. When they start becoming a little toxic, they start to derail. When it derails, that's where the problem shows up. It's the tension between the first and second chair. So from your experience, I love what you're sharing. What you're sharing right now is huge. Somebody's hearing this and saying, hallelujah, the angels are speaking. I'm, I'm seeing it. <laughs> How do you begin to relieve some of that tension? Yeah, I, well, I think you have to. I think you have to answer it with this. With this answer, I don't think it's a problem to solve. I think it's a tension to manage. Okay. Think about that statement for a moment. I don't think it's a problem to solve. There are some things that are problems to solve. You've got to solve that problem, right? So that it goes away mm-hmm. from it. You want to solve it so it doesn't go. So it goes away. Some things are a problem to solve. Some things are only a tension to manage. That tension is going to never go away, ever. And so it isn't really about solving the problem. It's about managing the tension. And the way That's that good. you manage it is you've got to, I think from the first chair leader, you've got to recognize, is it showing up in one of my leader's hearts? Am I starting to notice that they're getting a little toxic? Am I noticing they're getting derailed? Am I noticing that they come with more problems than solutions? Am I noticing that when they speak, people feed them and it kind of feeds their ego a little too much? Am I noticing Mm -hmm. that um, they've shifted from asking great questions to having a questioning spirit? So as a lead pastor, Mm -hmm. recognize, is that happening in that second, second chair leader? Then as the second chair leader, youth pastor, worship pastor, whatever, They've got to manage the tension on this side and say, I got to guard my heart. It was Jesus that said to Peter about the disciples. He said, Peter, be careful. The, the enemy is sifting among you. Mm. You have to understand that phrase. The enemy is sifting six words. The enemy is sifting among you. I think the enemy would look at your church. Cause I know you're a pastor. Look at all of the, yeah. the staff and say, Hey staff, the enemy is sifting among you. He's looking for right. one person that's got a little crack in their heart that he can get in there, start getting hold of it, and, and then ultimately derail the entire train. That's what he's looking for. But so to say there's a problem to solve, I don't know if it's really a problem to solve. I know it definitely is attention to manage. Woo. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. You know, um, just, just hearing you talk about this makes me really excited. I want to remind all of our avail audience. The book is traction five proven principles for unstoppable growth. Uh, this is, this is, I I mean, we're just, we're not even scratching the surface of, of all the, the practical content that's in this book. Um, before we tell people how they can uh, reach out and get it and and, and connect with you and all the uh, things that you guys offer before that, can you just share a little bit about where where was this born in your heart? I mean, you know, ob- it's obvious with a book like this and some of the other resources you put out and even Church Boom, it's obvious that there's there's this desire to help others grow and boost them. There's also this desire of of restoring and he- helping kind of bring healing and lifting up those who are down. Why, why is this passion in your heart? Yeah. Um, you know, years ago, I know that Bill Happles has had his struggles in the last few years, but his statement that he made was true. I, the local church is the hope of the world. I really believe that. Um, I, I think the local church is the hope and we see churches struggling right now for 10 straight years. America's closes more churches than it opens. Uh, think about that for a moment. Where does that end up? If you're closing more than you open, 
It's just a constant downward spiral. You know, we're, right now, yeah. when America opens a thousand churches, we close two thousand. That's how fast we're losing them. Wow. So, when <clears throat> if that happens, where does America go? What happens to our kids and grandkids? What kind of America has that become? What happens to to redemption throughout America? So, to me, the answer is we've got to help pastors get healthy help them figure out how to grow their churches, help them how to keep the lights on and not just plateau. 80% of all churches are either in plateaued or decline. We've got to get churches growing again. Wow. We have to. You know, in the 50s, that that uh, this is just a cool thing. In the 50s, America, the church population was outpacing American population. In other words, more people were joining the church than babies were being born. Wow. It ain't like that anymore. It's gone wow. completely the mm-hmm. opposite way. And so... Man, we've got to realize, and that's where it comes from. It's like, man, we're, we lose the churches. We lose everything. So we got to fight for America's churches. And the way you fight for America's churches is you fight for the pastor and say, man, let me help you. Let me help you get some wins under your belt, some hope, confidence, and strength. And let's get this thing going the other way. I, I tell people all the time, I said, to some degree, the bride of Christ is in the emergency room. And huh. we got to do everything we can to get the bride of Christ out of the emergency room as it pertains to America. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, that would, that would make you a, uh, an ER staff. I'm in ER, the buddy. Hospital. You, <laughs> you, you and your team. <laughs> um, how, how can people get this book traction five proven principles for unstoppable growth and yeah. other resources that you guys offer or, or even yeah. connect with your ministry? Yeah. Well, it, it's an, uh, this one was published by avail so they can get it through avail, which I know this is an avail podcast. Uh, so they can get yes, it through avail. Yeah. Yeah. They can get uh, traction through avail. They can get through Amazon, um, to connect with us, which we have a lot church room coaching certification. Those that want to become a coach, those that want to get coaching. If you're a church under a hundred, we give coaching for free, for free for a whole nice. year. Nice. Uh, so all of that, uh, and we have church room university. That's a place that you pay $29 a month and you get all these resources and all this help. Anyway, all of that's found at churchboom.org. So the book avail, or you can get it through Amazon, Traction, uh, but all things Church Boom, including connecting with me, uh, is churchboom.org. Excellent. Churchboom.org, uh, all things related to the coaching services, the the yeah. way Church Boom University. Uh, and, and I love that. Any any pastors, or if you know a pastor who has a church under 100 uh, in attendance, they can get one year of coaching for free. Let me tell you, that is an amazing offer. You need to reach out to somebody and send that link, churchboom.org. And it is a privilege for us at Avail. We have uh, kind of a monthly book that is published through uh, Avail. And obviously, Traction is one of those uh, by Pastor Chris Songson. Um, I- I'm telling you, just just talking about this with you, Pastor Chris, I'm, I'm not only excited to get deeper into the book, but to but to share it with my staff team, uh, share it with a few pastor friends, because it, it really, I mean, what you're doing is you're giving us handles. We don't, we don't have to keep making them up or, or, or just using theory, we can say, Hey, these are, these are practiced, uh, and evidenced uh, strategies and systems that it's just a matter of identifying. How can we apply them? Hey, everybody. Uh, I hope you've been encouraged. I've been encouraged. Uh, you may have, you may want to listen back to this podcast, uh, and take some notes. Uh, you also going to want to hit that, whatever, uh, wherever, whatever platform you're using, we might want to hit the share and send it in a text to, to some friends or to a staff team. Uh, what an awesome opportunity. Pastor Chris, as always, on behalf of Dr. Sam Chand, Martin Van Tilburg, our Avail team, we're honored that that this book, Traction, is on our as one of our Avail published books. We're, we're proud of you, uh, and we honor you for your leadership. And we, I can't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Church Boom just fr- from a distance here, and, and I'm going to be sending some people your direction because I think – I think what you guys are doing is, is really, really making a difference. Thank you for your service to the kingdom. Hey, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this. On behalf of Avail, my name is Virgil Sierra, lead pastor of Vertical Church, a.k.a. Iglesia Vertical here in South Florida, where we are one church, two languages. I'm your host here on Avail, where we talk about leadership with amazing leaders like Chris Songson. By the way, the book is Traction, Five Proven Principles for Unstoppable Growth. You got a little taste, but you got to get the whole meal by buying the book. Check it out through Avail and wherever books are sold. Love you guys. Catch you next time right here on Avail.
Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Avail podcast with our guest, Chris Songson. You can get Chris's book, Traction, at theartofleadership.com and find out about pastor coaching and church rescue by going to churchboom.org. For more leadership resources, check us out at theartofleadership.com and make sure to claim your free trial subscription of the Avail Journal at availjournal.com. As always, I'm your Avail podcast host, Virgil Sierra. Muchas gracias. Thank you for connecting with us to learn the art of leadership here at the Avail podcast.